Sino ang isasalang natin ngayon sa hot seat? I think that I my opponents are very different from him. Do you love him or you hate him? Pero... Eh, hindi, wala naman nag-hate siya. Good evening, I'm your host, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Late last year, the House Committee on Constitutional Amendments had proposed four major changes to the 1987 Constitution. These proposed amendments include the giving of Congress the power to lift restrictions on foreign investments and the extension of terms of congressmen and local officials. Now, our guest uh, is spearheading these charter changes, and he's the chairperson of the House Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to our uh, guest for tonight, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, former Congresswoman Kim. Yes. I'm very happy to be here in your program, The Hot Seat. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so, ngayon, hot seat ito, uh, <laughs> Congressman. So, we will ask all the burning issues yes. of the day. I'm uh, ready to answer those questions. Okay, so we'll start, uh, Kong, because uh, you are the chairman on mm. uh, the Committee of Constitutional Amendments. So, first of all, um, for us, uh, we know already that uh, you know these changes had been long overdue. Correct. But um, for uh, many of our um, mm. uh, Filipino uh, citizens, they don't know. Uh, yes. They don't know. They don't understand where we are coming from. So, una sa lahat, tanong natin, ano po ba ito? What are these uh, proposed amendments? And uh, bakit kayo uh, ngayon lang naglabas nito? Or is this something that has been there a long time yes. ago? Let me start, uh, Kim, with the uh, uh, proposal to give Congress the authority to adjust uh, the, uh, the investments, foreign investments in our country. Yes. Our constitution, the 87 constitution, really puts a limit, uh, really a uh, limit for foreign investments like in public utilities yes. and development natural resources to only 40%. Yes. It cannot be higher than that. Then uh, also for media, uh, seventy percent for for education. Uh, uh, the the limit is thirty percent. In other words, seventy percent Filipino. So there are limitations: forty percent, thirty percent, or zero percent. So because of this, we have very low, uh, in the past decades, very low foreign direct investments. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Singapore last year had fifty billion US, and then uh, uh, Indonesia has twenty four billion, mm -hmm. and Vietnam has twenty billion hours. Uh, last year was only 5.8 billion. So 5 billion it, only. Yeah. Oh, Paltry sum compared very, very to the Very small investment. compared to that. So we, this is a, uh, uh, the ASEAN, for example, is competing for limited foreign direct investments. Yes. If we have this kind of a constitutional limitation, we will continue to be laggards mm -hmm. and always behind our ASEAN neighbors in getting foreign investment. Why do we need foreign investment scheme? We need them because we want to have more industries in our country mm -hmm. and more employment for our Filipino youth. Absolutely. So our, our running uh, uh, unemployment rate now, uh, Kim, is uh, about 5.4%. Uh, That's small in terms of looking at the specialties, but the underemployment, Kim, is 18%. In other words, underemployment. Yes. In other words, those who are not in full employment, meaning seasonal, part-time. Yes. So our total unemployment and underemployment is, is 23%. It's too large a population not to have full work yes. and full income. So right. that's the reason why we are proposing that in our 11 sentences in the Constitution, mm -hmm. which limits uh, foreign direct investments, we are going to put a comma mm -hmm. after these sentences and place there as may be provided by law. Okay. Meaning Congress can now lift this. Yes. For example, public utilities, why not lift this to 100% foreign? Mm -hmm. The more we have uh, good public utilities, uh, they will compete. And then, for example, develop natural resources. Then we can also allow 100%. It, it, it is like that. So that is a long. It has been the, the clamor ever since. I was in the, in the 16th Congress. Uh, uh, Speaker Belmonte, we had this approved in the committee, but unfortunately, it, uh, the time was not sufficient for yes. the plenary. So this has been discussed right. before oh, oh, for the I... past 10 years. So now 
we are finalizing this mm -hmm. by approving this in the House mm -hmm. and we will send it to the Senate. So that's the first one. Right. Okay, Akong, I, I agree with you kasi even up to way back uh, 12 Congress, mm. 2001, nandun ako. Yes, no. you were there, yes, uh, Congresswoman. We, we tried doing that already and mm. uh, we centered on the economic provisions Correct. also. Mm -hmm. But um, some people are saying now that, uh, you know, they're raising the same old uh, issues. Mm. Uh, meaning to say, Maganda nga, economic provisions. Pero ang sinasabi nila sa atin kasi, Kong, is that, uh, number one, we are there to primarily um, increase the term limits for congressmen. <laughs> Akala nila, yung huh. mga nakaupo ngayon, pahahabain yung yeah. termino so nila. So let me explain that. Oh, pangalawa, sabi nila, ito daw recent na, amen, na resolution na ginawa sa Kongreso ay ginawa behind closed doors. Mm, yeah. So please... Uh, so uh, it is not behind closed doors because uh, we... Uh, all the members of uh, the uh, minorities were invited there. There was, uh, the, the, it was held in a conference room because uh, there was nobody else anymore to hear. Right. Because this issue had been heard. All, all organizations, business, yes. academia had been heard yes. over a period of about, uh, about uh, nine years, no? three congresses ago. Yes. So uh, this was voted on and fully discussed. Now, uh, as far as the increase of the term, uh, we are saying that this increase of the number of years, mm -hmm. we're not extending terms. We are extending only the, the, years, the, of the, the years of service because mm -hmm. we're not extending ourselves. Yes. That is the connotation, that is yes, the misconception. That, that's the one that, that we saying. are going to extend ourselves by two years. No. The five year term of a local government official, mayor, vice mayor, councillors, governors, vice governors, board members, and members of the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. instead of three, which everybody has agreed, we have been all over the Philippines in our consultation, everyone agrees that three years is too short a term for local officials and congressmen. Why? On the first year, you make budgeting, you make your plans. On the second year, you start implementing your projects. But on the third, the third year, year, you start campaigning. You start campaigning Only again. one year really Oo. of so, bale, service. Ang, uh, just to clarify, ano na po ngayon ang magiging bagong setup once or if and when uh, the uh, house proposal is approved? We are proposing that uh, instead of three years, we will have five years term for local officials and representatives. Five, five years? What five years. Five, five years, years for one term. For one term. Now, they will the be entitled term. to uh, the new... We are for two re-elections, meaning 15 years. But most of us now are finding it too too long because right now we have nine yes. years, three uh -oh. terms. No? So the proposal now of the interagency of uh, the, uh, the DILG, mm -hmm. uh, interagency uh, task force on uh, constitutional reform, yes. is proposing for... Five years plus only plus one re-election. Ah. Ten years, which is to me, oh, oh. which might be better. Actually, this that's be good. Better. So instead of, uh, parang hindi naman siya malayo. Hindi no? malayo. Kasi three mm. years, three years, three years tayo. Yeah, oh. eh. So ngayon, five years plus five and years. years oh, ten it years will, lang. It will give us enough time yeah. to be able to implement all yeah. the Correct. projects, oh, oh. all the goals, and the things that we envision for our uh, yes. constituents. Yeah. That will be a bad, we will reconsider what you approve. The three terms to only two terms. Okay, so ang tanong, kasama po ba ang present Congress ngayon na makikinabang? Hindi, uh, not the present Congress, not the present local officials. Mm -hmm. This will, If this will be approved uh, by this year or next year before 2022, this will be applicable in the elections of 2022. So, so hindi, it will not be applicable uh -oh. to us. Uh -oh, so kasi, there is no extension for all of us. None. Uh -oh. Kasi so yun yung naisip nila eh. Hindi <laughs> no, ba? No, no extension to Because it will be against. Because even the Constitution provides that even in increase of salaries, Congress cannot make it effective on their own. How much more for a term? No, not, so not therefore, it, 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 is, it cannot be implemented during this term. The additional two years will be for those elected in 2022. Oo nga. Tama. It makes sense, di ba? But, Kong, ito pa yung another question nila. Okay, so now you've made the, the basic hurdle in, mm. in Congress. But what about in the Senate? Wala tayong nakikita ng uh, twin measure or wala tayong nakikita na similar action being taken there. So ang ibig ba sabihin nito, eh, if this will go the way again of past yeah, Congresses, di ba? To be uh, honest. We I hope mean, that the senators will have an open mind. Sino ba ang in charge? Reason, Sino ba ang counterpart mo doon? Ah, si Senator Francis Pangilinan. Okay, okay. so ayan yung sagot yeah, sa tanong oh. ko. Now, uh, we <laughs> will, uh, the only thing is that since uh, 
Uh, we have some features of federalism in our proposal. And one of these features of federalism is a regionalization of election of senators. Yes. Like in what we have approved in our committee, we have nine, uh, nine uh, regions times three senators each. These senators, three per region, total of 27, these three senators per region will be voted by the region themselves. Okay, so how many regions are we looking at? Yung present po ba ngayon? Ano po ba yung... Uh, yeah, ang atin is nine because oh, if we go to the six, yes. 17 present regions, including mm -hmm. NCR, it's just too many. Ah, uh, so sa tingin nyo masyado marami? Masyado marami, marami at 17. So, so medyo um, ano masyado. Oh, the planning will not be as regional but, as can be. But Kong, eto naman ang tanong. If we are only going to uh, use uh, or break it down into nine regions, Si parang mas kumonti naman ngayon yung uh, nahalal. Tama po ba yun? O, o hindi? Naman, hindi. Because right now, 24 naman ang senators ngayon. Oh, all right. So, anong uh, mangyayari? Uh, nine uh, regions times three, 27. Mm -hmm. Dagdagan pa ng tatlo. I see. But the good thing here is, for example... Ay, teka muna, hmm. Kong. Alam ko marami ka pang good news dyan and you can explain further. But we will be right back after this break. Please stay with us. Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. Our guest for tonight is still Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. So, uh, Congressman Rufus, I was uh, asking you a question earlier and you were ready to answer. So, tell us, so ilan na ngayon ang iboboto natin na senador kung proposal natin ngayon ay papasa? Yeah. In our proposal of the Committee on Constitutional Amendments, yes. we will have nine regions. Our country will be divided to nine regions. Nine regions, you have three Senators elected every region. Yes. So we'll have 27. Okay. Yeah, so, so the, the good thing here is that many regions of our country now do not have senators. That's why development is very slow because most of our senators, they really come from Metro Manila. Agreed. So the point is, let us now democratize and have more regionalized representation for them to take care of their own regions. For example, San Marlite, Region 8, no senator. Yes. Region 9, uh, sa mga peninsula, none. Caraga, none. Bicol, no more. Oh, oh, so therefore, right now, we are saying that all our regions, Luzon, besides and Mindanao, in nine regions, will have their representatives so that in the Senate, they'll be able to bring development and funds in the region. Also, they're saying, uh, Congressman, it will make more sense when you elect uh, this way than through the national way. Because mm -hmm. when you elect national way, so, syempre, meron ng ibang natural built-in advantage yung iba. That's correct. Hindi ba? Those who so, are very popular, yes, uh, those oh. who have all the resources correct. to manage a national right. campaign. But they may not necessarily know what the priorities are but for the this, region, yes, yes of this certain. You know, Kim, uh -oh. in America, we have 50 states in America. Yes. Now, uh, their, 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 their congressmen are by districts, meaning in accordance with the population. For mm -hmm. example, uh, California will have about uh, 40 senators. No? Mm -hmm. But for uh, 40 for, for congressmen, but for the senators, every state, mm -hmm. no matter how small mm -hmm. in America, has two senators. Oh. Maine, very small. Connecticut, very small. Yes. Two. Yung California, very big. New York, also two. Oh, so oh. this is the equalizing force, right. oh, which oh. we don't have in our country. I think, yeah, I think it's about time now. Ano? Eh, ano naman yung proposal, uh, Congressman, na you vote uh, the president and vice president in tandem? That is the third proposal. Okay. Uh, the third proposal is that there will be tandem voting, mm -hmm. like in America. A vote for the president is a vote, is a for, vote the for the vice president. president. Why? Look at what happened, uh, what has happened to us. What is happening now, actually. Us, yes. Now, our mm -hmm. vice president belongs to another party. So, there is disagreement and there yes. is uh, not, uh, and there's no mutual uh, trust and mutual, uh, uh, what's this, program mm -hmm. to immediately proceed after elections because mm -hmm. they belong from the same, different parties. That's right. So, let's correct that. It will be tandem voting, a vote for the president, automatically a vote for the vice president, so that they will hit the ground running mm. on the same vision, on the same platform, and yes. they'll be together. That's right. So, ano yung fourth na proposal? Well, we have the uh, proposal for the 
uh, oh, that's already the, the, the fourth because the first is the uh, economic. economic, the, the second the is limits. the Senate, uh -oh. and then the, uh, the terms, mm -hmm. and then the tandem voting. Ah, so tandem, tandem voting yun. Pero bakit kaya kong, why do you think that um, the Senate <laughs> is not inclined to look at this situation the way the <coughs> congressmen are looking at it? Yeah. Ano, meron po ba kayong discussion I, I, with your counterpart? Uh, not yet at this time because we still have not approved uh, on the, uh, in, uh, we are now trying to have the proposals of the interagency of the DLG be considered, but we will do that soon. That's why we asked an open mind to the Senate that uh, they will take these amendments. But I think the hurdle really is the uh, regional elections by senators. Right. So we hope that they will consider really the development why of the do, entire country. Why are they opposed to this? Um, mainly because... Uh, they would have to run in the different regions. Oh, uh, so baka uh, mawawala yung kanilang advantage? Uh, Mayroon naman advantage palagi. Kailangan na sila eh. Oh, oh. So it's just a fear probably that they don't have this, uh, unlike a national constituency, that they can win any time. So mm -hmm. that's the only reason I think that they would uh, a, little, a little hesitant on taking up our Hindi amendments. naman little yung hesitation <laughs> nila kung they're not even ano, inclined to talk about it yes, at this time. At this time. Eh. So we oh, oh. asked our good senators, to keep an open mind first on the on the lifting of uh, these foreign uh, investment limitations. Mm -hmm. Second, the term of local officials mm -hmm. and the uh, House of Representatives. Third, election by region. And fourth, tandem voting for President and Vice President. Oo nga. So, bale, ang, ang tanong naman natin ngayon dyan, uh, Congressman, what if, um, you know, this uh, goes in the way of like previous Congresses where uh, we are able to succeed in the House, we are able to gain traction, and then hindi talaga gumalaw ang Senado. Magsisimula po ba tayo? Uh, I believe that... Uh, or gusto nyo na katulad ng sabi nyo, at the end of the day, it's up to the President too. I, I think it will be very much dependent on the President. And the President, if you will remember, the President has always been for a federal system of government. But he said now, parang hindi na niya priority. Yeah, hindi na priority. But ano this, this, these features of having uh, regional senators can be a good start. It's not yet federalism. Mm -hmm. That's why he could support this. If he will see that Congress, the House, will by three-fourths vote mm -hmm. approve this and send this to the Senate, he will see that there's a lot of support in the House right. for, these four, uh, for these four amendments. Mm -hmm. And so the president may be able to convince his allies in the Senate to support this. And if he, the president moves, I believe that the Senate will be able to, uh, to, to act as uh, what the president will request. Oh, nga. Let's hope for that. Kasi ako mismo, I, I support that mm. move. I've always been supportive of that. Actually, even for federalism, I, I am for federalism, no? Thank Pero, you. Congressman, malipat naman tayo sa ibang mga issues. Okay. Actually, the hottest, one of the hottest mm. issues now, okay, would be um, yung sa Magnitsky, Magnitsky Act. What happened to uh, as a result of uh, the implementation of that Magnitsky Act, mm. especially kay Senator Bato de la Rosa, yeah. tinanggal yung visa niya. Tapos yung meron pa tayong another issue again, and I want you to comment on that. Yung sa automatic review of government yes. contracts. So let's start first with the uh, yung sa Magnitsky, Magnitsky Act. Act, its implications. At ano po ba talaga itong Magnitsky Act na ito? And uh, bakit naging ganito far-reaching ang kanyang uh, implications sa atin? Well, I believe that uh, the Magnitsky Act would uh, uh, prohibit uh, persecution of uh, people, uh, political uh, opposition. In, yes. uh, like uh, Magnitsky was in Russia yes, persecuted. Yes, right. This was uh, named after, um, after him, the Russian, the Russian yes. opposition leader. Yes. Now, uh, but I believe that the withdrawal of Senator Bato de la Rosa's visa is uncalled for. Mm -hmm. The Philippines is not an ordinary ally of the United States. We have been a main ally of the president because mm -hmm. we were with the, we were the, with the Ameri Americans since 1898. Mm -hmm. We were their colony. And so therefore, there has been a close relationship between that. And uh, I believe that they should not have just, it's a senator of a republic, mm -hmm. they should not have withdrawn that. And it's not just uh, him. They are saying that... And some that, of them, yes. Oh, oh the, so those, those that are involved. Involved yes. in the imprisonment of uh, Senator Dilema. But, you know, the, the, the call should be uh, not to withdraw visa, but the call should be for the courts to really act on the case of Senator Dilema. Mm -hmm. That is what we want. Uh, we want justice to come out here. Now, if there are evidence 
against the Lima, then he continues to be in jail. But if there is no evidence, she should be set free. Eh, pero it's getting the, 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 the length of the hearing is quite so long already. But, but Congressman, <laughs> you were a lawyer by profession, yeah. and you know that in the Philippines, ganon talaga kabagal dito eh, which really frustrates so many people. That's no? why. Kaya nga merong iba nagsasabi, mag-revgov na lang daw tayo, <laughs> di ba? Because they feel yeah. na wala na silang ibang pupuntahan, yeah. no other resource. But, but I believe that in the case of Sr. De Lima, the course could be faster, really. It's been mm -hmm. so much time, right. more than two years already. And uh, we, let, let's uh, decide. That's why, you know, I attended the conference. They were already saying, uh, we passed the international conference. This is parliamentarians for global mm -hmm. action. They called for the, for the release. We could no. We cannot call for the release. There is already a court proceeding. Yes, there what is. What we can call for is a speedy justice for yes, uh, speedy for, resolution for, for, resolution for, for yes. central dilemma. So that should have been what the senators in the U.S. should do, not to call for a release or to get the uh, to remove a mm -hmm. travel of Filipinos there. But anyway. The, the but, reaction there of yes. the president oh, oh. is to be able the, to cancel to, uh, 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 to me so, that will be I would I would suggest and petition the president to reconsider this move. Why, sir? Because if you cancel the BFA, this will be inimical to our national interest and security. Now, if you cancel this, it sends a signal to the United States that uh, we, we don't want to have good relations with them. Mm -hmm. Because the BFA really is a sign that we are coordinating by the forces, American coming here and have been training with all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not good. We are saying to the U.S. that uh, we don't want to be friends anymore. And that is difficult because right now we have a territorial dispute with, the, with China. You know, China is still claiming our entire West Philippine Sea yes. through their nine dash line doctrine, which the arbitral tribunal already in The Hague had already ruled to be illegal yes. and without basis in international law, the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Seas. So, there pero, is really no such thing. Pe, pero, Mr. Congressman, no. is it aside nga yung ano eh? <laughs> that does not matter. Oh, oh, eh. Because we have already won the tribunal. And right. the arbitral tribunal. Yes. Internationally, we have won in the international arena. Correct. They may not enforce it, but the point is, we, we have we that already. Won. We yes, won already. We still won. So, this uh, China is uh, still claiming the, the West Philippine Sea, mm -hmm. which they say is part of the Nine Dash Line in the South China Sea. Second, China is still harassing our fishermen mm -hmm. in the Panatag Shoal That's within right. the 200 mile exclusive economic zone because Panatag Shoal is only 70 kilometers away from Zambales. Yes. So that is in violation of the UNCOS. And secondly, they, uh, they stop the BRP, mm -hmm. the, you know, the resupply of the BRP uh, Sierra Madre, right. which is being docked in the Ayungin Shoal. Mm -hmm. Ayungin Shoal is also within the 200 mile kilometer right. zone. So we have this conflict now. Right. No, if, if, for example, we would enforce our... our if and we would and enforce, cancel the VFA, for example. For example, cancel Okay, it. so now, I will ask you this, uh, Kong, Kong Rufus, no? If uh, the president makes good on his threat to cancel the Visiting Forces Agreement, what is the scenario that we will see? But, before you answer that, <laughs> Kong Rufus, we will go back and we'll uh, just have a little break. Please stay with us. Mga isyong pinag-uusapan Mga palitang laman ng pahayagan Impormasyong dapat niyong malaman Tatalakayin, pupusisiin At hihimayin ni Mario Garcia Kasama ang kanyang mga panauhin sa harap ng bayan Face Off Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. Our guest for tonight is still Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. And the Kong Rufus, medyo mainit na talaga oh. pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. And uh, before the break, our question that mm. was left hanging was, what will happen? What are the implications should the president make good his threat on uh, canceling the VFA? Then America will say, ah... You are uh, not good friends. You are not. Uh, you are. You do not value our relationship. Now, how about if they will also cancel? You will abrogate the Mutual Defense Treaty. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, under the Mutual Defense Treaty, in 1951, American forces will immediately mm -hmm. uh, go to the defense of uh, Philippine forces if vessels of the Philippine government will be attacked in the Pacific Ocean. Now, Pacific Ocean. That is the 
facility. But in a note verbal mm -hmm. of the State Department to the Philippine Foreign Affairs, South China Sea is considered to be an extension of the uh, Pacific Ocean. So if our vessel now will be hit by China in the South, in the South uh, China Seas, mm -hmm. definitely America will have to comply with this commitment and then defend our vessels and our territory. So you, Mawala na yan. So you're saying na pag kinansel ni Presidente Duterte Mawala ang na. VFA, uh -oh. so all the other treaties uh, Pas, will be affected? It will be affected because uh, we are, you know, we are trying to, you know, uh, Pero, threaten uh, an elephant. We are just like, uh, we're not really a mouse. We are a cat. An you uh, not an ant. <laughs> we are also bigger. But, but uh -oh. the point is, this is big. You, that right, is the, I understand. We are the only country which can support us in case of conflict with China. But, Congressman, ito naman yung sabi nung iba. Then why would you, if you are the U.S., and nakikita mo yung value ng Philippines din, bakit mo naman gagawin na i-cancel ang, ang visa ng sitting senator, di ba? That is why, Oo. by diplomatic channels, the, the Americans should also realize that it was uncalled for mm -hmm. to withdraw the visa of Senator De La Rosa. As a matter of diplomatic challenge, but mm -hmm. you cannot immediately do a reaction even graver than visa. Mm -hmm. Visa issuance really is really a, a function of the authority of that government. Visa issuance is the prerogative of a country. Actually, Kong, yeah. hindi lang daw po visa. Mm -hmm. According to the Magnitsky Act, pati yung kanilang mga assets will be frozen. That's also possible. Hindi po so, wala pa naman sa atin yun. Oo. Is that na, naman ang visa? Hindi, hindi natin alam, di ba? Kasi si Senator Bato, if I'm not mistaken, he did not also know, he was not informed that his visa was cancelled. It was only when he inquired because he was leaving. That is why it is also the fault. In other words, mm. we, we give fault to the U.S. for that. But... The answer mm -hmm. will not be to cancel the BFA. So in your because it has security implications. So in your opinion, what should be the proper way to answer? Immediately, immediately first is to ask for reconsideration mm -hmm. to the State Department. We have right. a very active and a very good the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. very very strong, yes. and so he could be able to make representation. And our ambassador, Babes Romaldes, there. Mm -hmm. Now, wala pa naman reconsideration, tapos mag-react na tayo. If our reconsideration is not acted, probably there can be some action, but never on the security arrangements. Oh, because nah. this is yes, our, so our survival as a country depends on a big power like yes. America to support us in case of conflict. That's now, right. During this time, okay lang, because maganda relations ni, ng China at saka the, the China and the Philippines. But if we have a new president in the, in the coming years, and there will be a conflict because the next president will impose mm -hmm. the judgment of the arbitral tribunal yes. against China. Then what we have a problem. Happen? So, yes. kung wala na yun, oh, ano na? Anong mangyari? Wala Tama. na kasi na, na ano na, na wala na sa BFA, na wala na mutual defense treaty. So, I urge the president to be, uh, to reconsider his move to abrogate the BFA. Okay, so, yan, very clear yan. So, according to Congressman Rufus. So, now, <laughs> we'll move on to the next. Okay. Eh, kasi alam mo yung presidente natin, eh, medyo, uh, ano siya ngayon, on the war path siya. And, his uh, surveys, his record surveys, very show, high. na talagang tama yung ginagawa yeah, niya, he, according, or may approval ng ating that's mga, correct. oo. 82% that's very high. I've never seen and figures like that. And only 10% like uh, disagree. So, uh, uh, the people, uh, the big majority, support the president in many yes. of his actions. Yes, and ang presidente do the record sa yung figures, astounding. So, Congressman, eto naman ngayon. Punta tayo sa mga review, automatic ah. review of government contracts. Yes. Um, what do you think of this one? Well, when you look at it on its face, talaga namang karapatan ng gobyerno yun, di ba? Yes, Oo. So, but you're saying that there has to be caution and that the uh, government must follow a certain procedure or process yes. when doing this. Why do you think so? Yes. Uh, the review of government contracts is a prerogative of any government. Yes. Because they want to look at the previous contracts if it is good or if it is onerous or inimical to the country. Yes. So, uh, that can be done. But, at the same time, the review should have due process. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to hear all sides. Mm -hmm. The ones that you're going to review, you hear them and give their side. If you think there's something on the rules or some fraud there, there has to be a other party giving that. And after you have heard the other party and you still consider, government consider, considers that this contract is tainted with fraud or onerous, we have to go to court. There can be no th such thing as unilateral rescission of contract. 
-hmm. because the contract is the law between the parties. There was agreement. Mm -hmm. The only you can only have that contract rescinded not by the what the other the part one of the parties saying no, ah uh, that is so much uh, onerous here. It has to be cancelled. No, you have to go to court because the other party will also resist that. Because but, but Congressman, they were saying, at the naman yung point of view ng mga supporters ng president, no, ang sabi nila. Ah, uh, totoo yun, no? Yung, hmm. you know, a, a contract kailangan should be respected and hmm. also it would have an impact on uh, yung how foreign investors would uh, look at They us here. Also. But because this ones, uh, these particular contracts uh, involve utili public utilities. Yes. So therefore, government has to really come in. So in, uh, let's take a look at the water concessioners. Yes, yeah. Yung favorite whipping boy ng ating presidente mm -hmm. ngayon, yung yes. dalawang water mm -hmm. concessioners, di ba? So ano po ba sa palagay ninyo ang tamang dapat gawin? Kasi ang sabi ni Presidente, I've directed the DOJ yes. to uh, review the contracts. Correct. Eh ang sabi nila, oh talagang merong... Uh, onerous provisions, oh, okay. right? So isn't that part of the due process? Uh, once that is already determined yes. after uh, hearing the other party, the, then the DOJ should already file the case in court to rescind it. Mm -hmm. Rescind the contract. But the court have to decide on whether it is rescissible or not. And you can only rescind a contract if there is fraud in essay. There is really corruption or fraud when that was given to the concessionaires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you Because think... Because onerous contracts... If, you know, it is a meeting of the minds mm -hmm. and, and, and one party can give more benefits to the other party willingly as long as there's no other consideration like fraud or corruption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh, in this particular case kasi, yeah. the president is adamant saying, kitang-kita mo na kaagad kung nasaan ang corruption dito. Yeah, but so, the but rule that's, law, what, that's what he's saying. But after the rule, uh, because of the rule of law and due process, mm -hmm. uh, it has to be the court that should decide. You know? right, okay. Unless, of course, the Secretary of Justice will present a, uh, a proposed uh, uh, contract mm -hmm. and the other party agrees, that's again a meeting of the contract, to mm -hmm. change the original contract. Right. But you cannot force uh, the other party to accept a proposal of one party. Mm -hmm. uh, the Secretary of Justice cannot also enforce a proposed revision of contract without the approval of the other party. I think that is what they're um, headed to yes, now. Yes, they should do uh, that. Uh, Kong, yes. So I think uh, the... the the water concessionaires are awaiting the draft of the uh, Secretary of Justice. Yeah, and the recommendations. Yes, recommendation. And then they will already yeah, renegotiate they will agree. If the they contract. negotiate, and they, if they agree, so well, well and good. But if the water concession feels that this might also be contrary to what they have agreed upon from the very start, mm -hmm. which are uh, the basic uh, uh, agreements on the, on, the, on the contract, they may also not agree. And in that case, if they don't agree, there's no such thing as enforcing that uh, propose uh, a contract by the DOJ on the concessioners, no. Mm -hmm. There has to be uh, the due process and uh, the courts will have to determine whether it should be rescinded or not. Okay, so that 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 part is very clear. And I think the DOJ is already yes, doing I think that so, now. Yeah. Oh. Oh, pero, Congressman, the, the sentiment in the business community, yes. of course, iba yung sentiment ng big business. Oh. Sa totoo lang, let's, uh, let's mm. face it, iba sa kanila at iba din sa um, average businessmen, di ba? Yeah. But the sentiment uh, that they say is that this will um, instill fear uh, among the foreign investors, especially the foreign investors. And uh, if you look at our foreign direct investments mm. right now, yeah. we still have a long way to go. And with this, matatakot sila na pumasok ulit. Kasi because of the amount of yes. money and capital involved, yes. only the biggest ones, or with the help of foreign investments, can you uh, undertake such a project? I agree. It, is, it has a chilling effect on investors because big business who have done business with the Philippines are now being, you know, uh, their contracts being forcefully uh, being changed. No? Mm -hmm. So that's precisely why uh, the government should also be very cautious on this. And after the Secretary of Justice had made a proposal that will remove the onerous provisions, I hope that the, uh, the, uh, the concessionaires will sit down with our, the government and if they can agree, that's the better procedure right. instead of fighting it out. No? So uh, I hope the Secretary of Justice will be able to come out with a, with a uh, proposed uh, amendment 
to these contracts, which are also acceptable also to the water concessionaires, okay. taking out these onerous provisions. But um, when you look at the other school of thought, uh, uh -huh. Congressman, they were also saying that shouldn't it be the case that the foreign uh, investors mm -hmm. would be even happier to see these uh, things happening because they'll know that when they come in, it is a more level yeah, playing field. That's true. Field. That's oh. true. That uh, it also shows that government cannot also, uh, we want investors here mm -hmm. who will not make contracts with government which are onerous against the Filipino people. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. So that, that's correct. But also, at the same time, again, there has to be due process every time. Yes. And as I have said, no president can unilaterally cancel contracts. Agree on so, that. So, so. Oh, it should be the courts. Now, if there is an agreement between the two parties based on a new proposed contract and the concessioners agree with that, well and good. That is the real, that's the proper procedure to do. Okay, so dahil ang ating uh, presidente ay very hardworking, marami siyang tinitignan no. ngayon, uh -oh. ang susunod naman natin ngayon uh -huh. na pag-uusapan, yung review or renewal ng franchises, di ba? <laughs> so, in this case, uh, yeah. isang media entity, this yeah. is uh, ABS-CBN. But, Congressman Rufus, before you answer that question, <laughs> we will again pause for okay. another break. Please stay with us. The Philippines has been around for centuries. Malayo na rin ang narating natin. But back then, the way of life has been mostly analog. Did you know that you need to take a boat from Cavite in order to go to Manila? Yes, ganon ang takbo ng buhay dati. You need to send a letter to the United States? Sure, pero aabutin ka ng isang buwan bago matanggap ang iyong liham. Kailangan mong tumawag sa bahay o sa iyong kaibigan? Many ways to do that. Pwede ka maghulog ng 325 sa payphone or use that vintage rotary phone na most likely 6 digits lang ang landline number. Forget about email. Telex at fax machine ang modes of communication for business. You want to listen to that one song of your favorite band on repeat? Sorry, pero kailangan mong i-rewind ang cassette tape. Buong album naman ang kailangan mong bilhin kahit iisang kanta lang ang gusto mo doon. But things change, and we as a race progress. The world is getting small. We are now a traveling population. Why? Because travel is now cheap. Our friends are across the world because our form of communication is now borderless. Time zones are now meant to serve as a guide and not as a limitation. We can buy things from the comfort of our homes. Nasanay na tayo sa convenience because why not? It is the price of development and a glimpse of our future. Have you imagined the future? How do you think it will look like? Driverless cars? Yes, autonomous driving will happen. Robots replacing low-value processes done by humans? Tama ka dyan. Paying for your groceries using digital currency? Very realistic. Materials being 3D printed instead of ordering? Yes, we are indeed a progressive race. And technology plays a vital and crucial part of it. How will this affect our lives? Kailangan ba natin itong matutunan? Mahirap ba itong aralin? Or kaya naman? How can our nation take advantage of these advancements? All of these can be understood and learned. Tayo ng matuto para umunlad. Nandito na ang Abante. Progress through Technology. Good evening and welcome back to the hot seat. We are now on the last leg of our episode this evening and still with us, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. So, Congressman Rufus, medyo uh, mabibigat yung mga tinakaw oh, mo ngayon na, eh. But, uh, based on what I know in law, yes. Uh, so I answer them, uh, I am a lawyer and former That's dean true. of yes. San Sebastian College Law. So I, I would answer your questions in line with what the law provides. Oh nga. So, ang ating iniwan kanina na, na question is uh, about uh, the renewal of franchises. And in this particular case, ABS-CBN, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I have really filed uh, mm -hmm. on my own. I have seen that... Uh, I have not seen what detrimental things the uh, ABS-CBN has done to our people mm -hmm. to warrant a non-renewal. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I filed a bill uh, for the renewal for another 25 years of ABS. -CBN. So you were one of uh, those. Uh, yes, about 11 of us has uh -huh. filed. So have filed. So I have filed a bill because I believe that uh, ABS-CBN 
had been giving rendering public service to our people. Right. Pero Congressman, let's take a look at the issue that yeah. the President is now uh, putting into uh, the non-renewal yeah. of this ABS-CBN mm. franchise. Sabi niya, hindi naman kayo nagbayad. E sinoli sa inyo yan uh, nitong uh, uh, Cory administration at hindi kayo nagbayad ng loans nyo sa DBP. So, well, ano have, ba ang take ninyo? I have read about that. Now, yes. they, they were able to to get back the uh, the properties through the special purpose vehicle law. Mm -hmm. Under the law, uh, DBP and other, uh, and other uh, 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 banks are allowed by law to even go lower than what is the, the loan plus interest and so forth, mm -hmm. for the disposal because banks are not supposed to hold uh, real estate yes. and businesses. So they, they bought it and they bought, and they were able to buy but the DBP, yeah, yes. the, to so, pay the DBP on this so property. So they were able to do that? Yes, but how come nobody was saying that they were able to pay that? No, they were ang, able to pay. Uh, it will not be as much as the loan itself because that's yes. precisely the SPV. Yeah. The special the spa, purpose oh, vehicle, oh, yes. the spa, because that is where that the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the banks are given the the uh, discretion to sell it at even lower price than the loan itself to be able to dispose of it. Okay, oh. my question, uh, Congressman, would be: Eh, nung ibinigay sa kanila yon, wala pa naman yung spavlo. Ito bang... Uh, it's spavlo already. O, o, meron na ba nung panahon 1986? At the time when they reacquired them, when they paid, it was through the spavlo already. Ah, uh, when Yung they paid? Yung loan sa DBP, when Kasi they paid. Kasi remember mm. when it was given back to them? Immediately. Naka-revolutionary uh, government yeah, 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 tayo yeah, yeah, eh. Oh, but after eh. that, the spavlo was passed. Ah, and they paid that. In, so consequently, that, they yes, settled it. That. I That's see. correct. Oh, oh. And then on the uh, non-payment of taxes, it was shown that they paid. They were no, for they, they they were for amicable settlement. Oh, oh, and the BIA has the right naman to... Uh, to have a settlement and they paid. So they mm -hmm. don't have any obligation with DBP and also with the BIR, nothing whatsoever. Okay. So therefore, and then I remember, you know, I, I, I myself had a chance to be with Gina Lopez mm -hmm. when in she her was project. Yes, 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 because yes. the late Gina Lopez wrote to immigration to sponsor about 10 hectares in La Mesa Dam for the plant replanting sure. to put up a, 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 a park there. And so I brought my 1,200. I was commissioned Bureau of Immigration at the time. The yes. time, and so I brought about about five buses and brought uh, my 1,000 employees there to uh, to uh, the La Mesa and planted there, mm -hmm. and they have now grown. Mm -hmm. So Gina Lopez, the late Gina Lopez, started the Bantay Bata, Bantay Kalikasan, and the Kapit Bisu para sa ilog, para sa ilog, sa Pasig, uh, Bisig para sa Pasig. And these are the things that we can remember of. Uh, ABSCB. And so uh, I believe that uh, uh, upholding the freedom of the press is one of the, uh, of the mandates of the Constitution which we in Congress should uphold. I, I, I believe that, sir. Pero ang sinasabi ng Presidente, in this particular case, sabi niya, wala naman tayong nilalabag na ano, gawin mo yung tama sa'yo, hindi ba? Parang hindi naman pwede na ibibigay na lang sa Yun ang kanyang sinasabi. Yes. So that's why we have to disabuse that notion, if, if so, na yun ang kanyang ano. Kasi hanggang ngayon, wala naman nagsasabi, Congressman. Hmm. You know, sad to say, ang daming lumalabas o oh, nag-author ng batas. Okay, ito yung aking question okay. sa'yo. <laughs> Halimbawa, uh, if you manage to uh, uh, get the number uh, of uh, votes required or the signatures which may required, be <laughs> oh, if you get that number, at pumasa lang ito, uh, hindi ba i-veto din ng Presidente? Unless it's so possible. But oh. normally, pag ganyan na, the sense of the House is that... Uh, it will be renewed. The president may be able to sign it. But even now, I believe that the president ultimately will be really, will agree to the, uh, the uh, re re renewal of ABS-CBN. 11,000 employees. That's true. The biggest in the entire country giving information, entertainment. And then you just uh, don't cut it on March 30. I cannot just imagine how in, the, uh, in a situation like that that you just shut off. I have uh, I have oh. uh, several scenarios. I heard several scenarios, <laughs> yes, exactly. Congressman. Yeah. Sabi nila, one, di naman sila totally makakat off. Kasi, you know, industries or media entities like us, for example, are going online and there's not a problem with that. So, baka yun daw ang isang te, uh, path uh, na pupunta nila. Iba na yan, team, uh, you don't oh. have the, you don't <laughs> have the, the uh, ABS-CBN facilities to have this they broadcast. They still have that property. Yes, uh, it's different. Oh. You cannot anymore even use the ABS-CBN. 
Mm-hmm. Yan doon natin because you're in Frances Scott. Second, ang oh, sinasabi nila, eh, pwede naman daw ma-renew, but there has to be some white knight somewhere. Ano sa palagay mo? Ang mahirap yun, mga white knight, baka sabihin pa na mga kaibigan ni Presidente yung papasok dyan, which is not true. Oo. There is no such thing as any, any, any friend of the President coming in. I have not heard about that. And the diba? President will not also do that. Mm-hmm. So it's really a cut. Mm-hmm. So it really, it will have to stop operations. March 30, and uh, just, just my, my, uh, my, 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 uh, I requested Chairman Alvarez, Chicoy mm-hmm. Alvarez, Chairman mm-hmm. of the Committee on Legislative Franchise, yes. please hear it, because it is not good that it will just be cut without any hearing. Mm-hmm. Paano naman kami? Mm-hmm. We deserve our bills to be heard. Yes. And let us hear the ABCBN, let us hear if the Solicitor General has complaints against mm-hmm. him. The proper venue is not the Supreme Court, Coranto, no. The proper venue is the Congress, because we have the exclusive authority to renew to, or to grant yes, con- oh, franchises, franchises over broadcasting that's and right. so ganon so let us let us hear it now yeah if uh, most of the majority would follow the president's uh, wish then what can we do that's right because this is a vote mm-hmm. and each congressman will have to vote uh, or for example in the committee and then later on in the plenary right. and how many yeah. numbers do you need now Ah, no, for, for the, it's just a majority. Uh-oh. In the committee, so majority. 50 plus one, oh, 50 plus one. Huh? And then in the, uh, in the, in the plenary, if brought the prayer, 50 plus one. Mm-hmm. And of course, the president, you know, has an overwhelming support in Congress. Yes. Uh, I myself belong to the coalition. Yes. But I just, uh, I just have a different view on this issue. Mm-hmm. But most of the uh, other, uh, the president's uh, actions, we support him. Yes. Because uh, he has done very well for our country. So, mm-hmm. yun lang, ano, that is what we have. Okay, so, <laughs> ano pa, ang, uh, tignan mo ha, grabe ang bigat ng mga issues nitong uh, yes. opening ng Congress. Yes, Ngayon, yes, di ba? Yes. When did you uh, open sessions? Uh, January, January 22. 22. Yeah, okay. last Monday, the other Monday. Oh, uh, so, isang, isang linggo pa lang, actually. And then, uh, the, the, our, our session ends on March 30. Now, ABCBN uh, expiration is March 30. Mm-hmm. So, actually, up to March 11, we only have now uh, 18 days. 18, 18 session, session days, days oh, uh, to tackle, oh, tackle it. Ha, eh, wala no, that's why we can see now, baka oh, <laughs> material time, oh, nga we eh. might lack Pero, time. Congressman, <laughs> I have to ask you this, mm. hindi naman ito hiningi sa yung pabor ng, ng uh, Lopez Group? No, never. I have never even talked with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, was ju- I just felt, because it became an issue already. Yes. So I filed somewhere in October mm-hmm. to, uh, to renew it. To renew yeah, it. Yeah, so okay. there, we, have no re- uh, we have no relations with the with the uh, Lopez group. Mm-hmm. I just believe in the interest of the national interest on the freedom of uh, the press yes. and freedom of expression, which is being carried to the columnists and the, uh, and the uh, broadcasters in that uh, station. So I believe that we have uphold, to uphold the freedom of the press. Oh, yes, it's absolutely, sir. Oo, sacrosanct yan sa, para sa mga katulad natin <laughs> sa, uh, sa media. Uh, okay, Kong, marami pa tayong ibang mga priority measures na kailangan na, ano, no, uh, na itackle. Uh, and with only 18 days, Session days yes, left. Is, yes, only. Oh, oh. Oh. So, ano, ano ang expectations mo ngayon uh, as a congressman? Especially, uh, okay, so this was one of the bills that you had filed, mm-hmm. di ba? But what, your, what about your other advocacies? Ano or yung ibang mga pending measures that you support? Ano yes. ang tingin mo? Well, uh, first oh. is the D- Department of uh, Disaster Resilience. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, for the first time in the history mm-hmm. of the Congress and the Batasang Pambasas in 1978, yes. the first time that we have a session, and that's why I thank us, uh, Speaker uh, Cayetano mm-hmm. for thinking of having an out-of-town session. Yung sa Batangas. For the, for Batangas we all oh, went to Batangas yes. to show solidarity. We heard uh, the people, they don't have to come to Quezon City. We went to uh, Batangas mm-hmm. to hear the mayors of Agoncillo, Laurel, and the other... Uh, so, parang uh, malaking town hall meeting yun. So, yeah. it's, a, it's a session, really. And hearing them, oh. we suspended the rules to hear them. And so, we were able to to get a first-hand mm-hmm. uh, report from uh, the victims of the Tal Volcano eruption. And uh, we were able then to, uh, to uh, pass a resolution that we will fast-track the 30 billion uh, rehabilitation fund for them. It's an immediate need. And yes. also a resolution that we are going to, uh, to fast track the approval of the Department of Disaster Resilience. Because yes. when we have a disaster, a calamity, 
Uh, it is, you know, the DSWD comes here, and then the local governments yes, would come here. Uh -huh. uh, then, uh, so there is no unified approach and yes, an, uh, an uh -huh. institution that will make sure that if something happens, there is already an right. institutional yes. institutional response yes. to a department. Everything uh -huh. is there already. Kumbaga, That's well one. coordinated, oh. synchronized. Oh, the action. other one is the Department of uh, Foreign, uh, the uh, foreign for uh, our Filipinos abroad, uh, uh -huh. our uh, our department for. Filipinos working abroad that should be passed because you know we have we have more than uh, 12 million Filipinos abroad mm -hmm. and whenever there's a conflict uh, always Filipinos are involved yes. there has to be a department that will take care now PUAA DFA OWA uh, 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 where do we go so, so well, uh, my own department ah, of that's Filipinos overseas right, uh, that's right, the other one and right. uh, the other one is the department of water so that this water <laughs> issues so there should be a department in charge mm -hmm. on having uh, our water, yes. unified water approach, oh. the sewerage of our cities and so forth. I and agree. The, and the water should now be brought from the different uh, sources, the so dams and brought here. Yes, uh, and it so. will now, hopefully, it will also address that issue on the water concessionaires. That's correct. Oh, Tama. There Meron akong huling question sa'yo. Wala uh. na tayong oras kong Rufus. <laughs> Pero itong last question, one sentence lang ang sagot, ha? Uh. E eh, paano yan pagka merong... Uh, a change in the leadership in the house. Oh uh, well, uh, uh, to me, you know, uh, Hindi ba merong... Speaker Akaitan has been doing a very good job. Okay. But there is an agreement, the Magellan Solution, mm -hmm. 1521. Yes. Okay. 15, uh, 15 months, months and 21 months. Months for the months. first, yes. Now, to me, uh, you know, the speakership of the house is a function of the decision of the president. Oh. Ever since. Whoever so, the president wants to be the speaker, let us be realistic about this. Eh, pero merong moves nga na they're saying na ipagpatuloy na lang. So, That's precisely why there uh -oh. are moves to retain him. Uh -oh. There are moves that uh, uh, Congressman it, it, Velasco comes in. Yes. And so, it's the president who will decide. Ah, okay. When the so, president says... Uh, Speaker Caetano is retained, he will be retained. If the president says stick to the uh, agreement 1521 then, and Kong, Allard, uh, Kong Lord Velasco comes in, it will be Lord Velasco. So we await the president's decision because this Magellan solution is the president's solution. Right. Okay. So sa palagay mo, at the end of the day, it's still the president's call. That's correct. So nobody can preempt that. So kami, naghihintay lang kami. We do our job. We yes. work well. We support uh, Speaker Caetano. Yes. But the uh, president will be the one deciding who will be our next speaker. Okay. So those are uh, very good final words, <laughs> di ba? So sa susunod, pag-uusapan natin yan at length, di ba? <laughs> thank you very so, much for next, the next one. <laughs> oh, for the next guesting. So we thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much, Kim. My pleasure. For being uh, with us here. My pleasure and my yeah. honor. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes, okay. and of course, uh, maraming salamat po ulit kay uh, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. At dito po nagtatapos ang latest episode ng Hot Seat. Ako po ang inyong lingkod, Kim Bernardo Lokin. Magbabalik ang Hot Seat next week. <music>